Hi friends, the next topic in polity is your center state relation. Okay, I hope you know the idea, you got the idea of some center and state. Okay, we have dealt separately with center, we have dealt separately, and with state, we have dealt with separately. Like for center, we have, we have studied about the parliament, the union executive, and the state, we have dealt with the st state executives. Okay. So now what is the relation between a center and a state? Okay, what relation they are, um, what is exchanging with them? That we will see. So when you are studying about a center state relation, one word is very important. That is federalism. This word becomes important when you study about center state relation. So what do you mean by federalism? It is a principle, okay, where federalism means two government, a distinction of power, okay, a separation of power. That is the exact definition of federalism. So, there are some features there. For federalism, we have some certain features uh, like what to say, uh, two governments, separation of powers and integrated judiciary. This everything India is having. Okay, India is having all the features of this federal, federal form of government. Okay, so you can't come to a conclusion that India is a federal, federal country and all. Okay, you can't come because there is the another, the counter. The counter is non-federalism, which is which is nothing but the unitary form of government. Okay, India is also having the features of those unitary form of government. Okay, India India is having both the features of federalism and the unitary. Okay, these features there are some five to six features that you can see in your book. For unitary also there are some six features in your book. Okay, so unitary means what are the unitary features? A strong center. Okay, a strong center power. Yeah, of course, India is having a strong center. Okay. Then the uh, judiciary, okay, judiciary will be dependent on the center. Yeah, because your state high, your state uh, supreme, your, your high court judges are appointed by the center. Okay, then your public, uh, your state public service commissions uh, chairman are appointed by the governor, but can be removed only by the president. So in everything, your like your election commissioner, okay, your state election commissioner is all is also appointed by the governor, but can be removed only by the president okay so in every department there is an intrusion of center so you can't come to the conclusion that india is a federal country and all you are having a future of unitary government also so there comes the clash okay so india is called as the quasi federal okay not entirely federal quasi means partial okay so india is a quasi federal country so that is uh, with federalism uh, so when dealing about center state you should know about this federalism okay for uh, for better um, know about the features of federalism you can see in your book okay next okay uh, this problem between center and state did not happen till 1967 because till 1967 there were only one party rule okay congress will be at the center and in all the states congress will be ruling okay so that there was no problem but after 1967 uh, these states, okay, the state, the, the state governments got replaced by another party like BJP or another uh, local governments came. So there came a clash. So that led to the somewhat uh, frustrated relation between center and state. Okay, so that is somewhat history and introduction to the center state. So there are some we will study the relations in three modules like the legislative relations, the administrative relations, and the financial relations. These are the articles covered. And another another time I am repeating this note. Articles are not important in the point of UPSC, but if you are preparing for any state government exam, have a note of those articles. Okay. So first we will go with the legislative relations. So what is this legislative relation? Legislature means making laws that we all know. Okay. So we are going to see about the what is the legislative making of law in that module. What is the relation between a center and a state? Okay. So before studying about that, you should know about the territorial extent. We all know at center there is a parliament and at the state we are having state legislative assembly. So this parliament, what is the territorial jurisdiction of this parliament throughout the territory of India? That is the territorial jurisdiction of a parliament. So what is with the state legislative assembly? The territorial jurisdiction is up to that state. Okay. If you are in a state of Karnataka, the Karnataka state legislature can have the power to make laws only within the boundary of this Karnataka. Okay. Like that every state uh, jurisdiction is restricted to its boundary. Okay, that is the state. Next one is there. That is extra territory. Okay, extra territory means a territory out of India. Okay, in that in that territory, who can make law? It is to the parliament. So extra territory 
laws can be made by the parliament. Exoterritory means if India is uh, signing a MOU with China, okay, uh, to uh, to buying some power and all, okay, like that. If uh, India and China are coming to MOU, means Parliament will only pass your law, no. So this extra extra territory is with the Parliament, not with the State Legislative Assembly. State Legislative Assembly, it is only concerned with the, within that territory of that state, okay. So that is the territorial extent. Next, we'll see about the list, okay. So there are some three important lists. One is known as the Union List. Next is known as the State List. This is concurrent list and something called as residual power. This list will be uh, similar for all the relations, for legislative, for administrative, for financial, okay. For these, all these, we are having this, these order list only, okay. So this union list, this is union. So your parliament, your center can make laws, okay. Uh, so this is a list, okay. In this list, there will be some materials. Like this union list is having some 99 items, your state list is having some 61 and your concurrent list is having some 52 items. Okay, that you can see in your polity book. Just don't mug up and waste your time and all, just have an idea. Okay, for example, union list will be having some important um, materials under the union list like your railways, your telegraph, your defense, your external affairs, home ministry like that. Those things will come under the union list. State list like agriculture, irrigation, alcohol, liquor irrigation facilities like that, husbandry, medicine, those things will come under the state list and concurrent list, it is common for both, okay. These list, these numbers, these items you can see in your uh, book, quality book it is provided, okay. So what happens here is, in this union list, there are some 99 items. In this 99 items, only your center can make law, that is your union list, okay. In state list, we are having 61 items. In the 61 items, your state legislator only can make law, but your state legislator is not exclusively can it, it can't make law. What do you mean by exclusive? Exclusive means only it can make, not like that. But in this union list, it is exclusive. Only your parliament can make law. But in the state legislator, usually a state legislator only will can make laws on the 61 list, but it is not exclusive one because the parliament can also make laws on this state list on some occasions. Okay, there are some five occasions. What are the occasion? What are those occasions? We will study. Okay. Next, we will go to the concurrent list. This idea of concurrent list was taken from Australian one. Okay, it is taken from Australian constitution. While dealing with making of constitution, constitution, I told what provisions from which constitution have a clear understanding. Okay, this concurrent list has been taken from Australian constitution. Australian constitution. This concurrent list. Okay, there are 52 items. In this 52 items, both your center and state. Both your parliament and state legislative assembly can make laws on those 52 items. Okay, that is meant by concurrent. Okay, so if you are uh, if your parliament, okay, uh, in this concurrent list, what happens is uh, if your parliament and state legislator both are making law on a same item. Okay, if there is one item, let's say example for agriculture is there. Simple example, okay. If agriculture is there in concurrent list and your parliament and state legislative assembly both are making laws on this agriculture means then your parliament law will only prevail, okay. Your parliament law will prevail over the state law. So, very simple. In the concurrent list, there are some 52 items. In this 52 items, if your in the 52 items, both your parliament and state legislative assembly can make laws. Okay, if both are making law on a similar item, then the parliamentary law will only prevail, not the state laws. Okay, that is one point. The second occasion, your state laws can also prevail over the parliament law. Parliament law only when your state legislative assembly is giving that act to the president and getting the assent of the president. Okay, if the state legislative assembly is placing those act, okay, that act to the president and getting the assent of president, then your state legislative assembly uh, uh, bill will prevail over the parliamentary act. So there are two conditions. Usually, concurrent list both can make. Okay, but if both are making on the same list, the parliamentary law will prevail. But uh, if your state legislator has reserved for the president assent and got the assent, then your state uh, state legislative assemblies bill will prevail over the parliamentary law. Okay, that is about the concurrent list. So this residual power. Okay, this is taken from Government of India Act of 1935. Here, this residual power means those items which are not present in this three list. Okay, those items will be included in the residual power. Okay, who is having the power with respect to legislative? I am saying legislative relations in this residual power. Who is having the who is having the power to make laws? It is with the parliament. 
so in this term only your government of india act of 1935 and now this uh, under this both are differs okay because in government of india act of 1935 also this residual power is present okay but what happens is in this act they have mentioned that this the power of making laws with the residual power is neither the parliament or neither the state legislative assembly it is given to the governor general okay but now here it is given to the parliament that is the difference between act, this act and now present day so this is the legislative relations now what we'll see is while dealing with state list i told now there are some occasions there are some five special occasions on which a parliament can make laws on the items mentioned in the state list those occasions we'll see now so what are those five occasions we'll see okay the first occasion is when your rajya sabha makes law what is rajya sabha rajya sabha is nothing but the representation of all the states okay so when your rajya sabha is passing a law okay passing a law that uh in a certain uh, in a certain state you should make some law on the state list then your parliament can make laws okay while dealing with rajya sabha i told there are some exclusive powers of rajya sabha on that exclusive powers i told one thing that is the same thing i am repeating okay rajya sabha is having this exclusive power when rajya sabha is passing a resolution that uh, a laws can be made on a certain state list then your parliament can make law that is first occasion the second one is when when states make a solution states can ask states can ask the parliament to make laws on the state list okay but there is some condition only one state cannot ask two or more state okay then if two or more state is coming and they are passing a resolution to the parliament that please make a law on our state list means then your parliament can make laws on this corresponding state so two conditions are there one only one only one state cannot ask for this resolution two or more state that is first condition the second condition is if if parliament is making laws on the corresponding state list that law is applicable only to the states which are asking okay if rajasthan and maharashtra are asking the parliament means then parliament will pass the law okay that law is applicable only in rajasthan and maharashtra okay that is my point that is the second occasion then third occasion during emergency what is this emergency i have dealt clearly about this emergency about the various types of, various types of emergency and about the effect if you want to know about this emergency you can go to my previous videos and see about this emergency topic so during emergency what happens is we all know we have studied already during emergency what happens is the 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 state will come under the control of the center okay the federal structure will become a unitary during the emergency that's why we told at the introduction of the session india is not a federal it's a quasi federal because it looks like rigid but during emergency your state will come under the direct control of the center so it is not a unit, it is not a federal it is not a federal structure itself federal structure means it should be a rigid one okay but we are not a federal that's why we are a quasi federal to add to your point in article 1 if you analyze india has been mentioned as a union of state not as a federal of state it is a union of state which means uh, it implies two things one is india is formed as a result okay india is not formed india is not formed as a result of agreement of all the states okay in us there are many states they all reorganized they and it was formed as usa it is not the case with india that is the first idea we should get from that union of state second idea is no other state okay none of the state can come out of this indian union so that are the that, that is the two ideas that is con, that is conveying in this article 1 so have this idea in mind india is not a federal country it is quasi federal these are the facts and uh, notice it solutions i have given why this why it is not a federal country but it is a quasi federal okay so during emergency what happens is you all know state will come under direct control of center so there are certain, there are many types of emergency like national emergency so during national emergency what happens is your your uh, parliament can make laws on the state subjects okay during national emergency but those laws okay those laws made by the parliament during national emergency uh, for how long that that law can sustain during the end of this national emergency okay after the end of national after the end of this national emergency till 6 months this is the this is the expiry date of that law which has been passed by the parliament on the state subject during the national emergency okay so have one thing in mind during national emergency your center will make laws on the state subject but it is not for indefinite time that last validity is not for indefinite time it will sustain to a period up to this national emergency and after that some 6 months after the 6 months that law will become expired this is during national emergency 
So during President's rule what will happen we will see okay. So there are different types of emergency. During President's rule also the state will come under the direct control of the President okay. So your President will say to the Parliament to make laws on the state subject okay of the concerned state okay. So such laws made by the Parliament during this President's rule will continue even after the expiry of this President's rule okay that is the main power of the president okay so that is the difference between national emergency and president's rule during national emergency both in both emergencies your parliament can make laws on the state subject but during national emergency the expiry of that the expiry of that uh, law made by the parliament will expire okay will expire after the 6 months when the national emergency got existed but here president's rule it will continue uh, even after the expiry of this president's rule that is during emergency Okay, to implement interna to implement international agreements also, your center uh, will uh, your center can make laws on any state subject on the interest of this idea. Okay, if any international agreements has to be signed, then your center can make laws on the state state legislator to that effect. Okay, that's also an occasion. So these are special occasions where your parliament can make laws on the state subject. The first occasion is when your Rajya Sabha is passing a resolution. Second, the second is when the state, two or more states, are passing a resolution to uh, pass a, a law on the state subject. Then the third is during emergency, and fourth is to implement the international agreement. So these are the occasions where your parliament can make laws on the state subject. Next, you are seeing about the control, centers control. Okay, center will always have a check over the state. Okay, so what is the check? What is the control that center is having over these states legislator? Okay, don't confuse. We are talking about only the legislative relations. Whatever I'm saying, it is all in the in the idea of legislation. Okay, in making laws. I'm I'm speaking only about the parliament and the state legislative assembly. Okay, don't confuse. I'm speaking only about the parliament and the assembly. Center's control. What is center's control? First one with Governor, who is governor? He is representative of the, he is appointed by the president. Okay, so governor will reserve, governor will reserve certain bill for the assent of the president. Next is president. Okay, certain bills. Okay, certain bills made by the state legislative assembly can only be only be passed when it's get, when it gets the president's signature. That is second one and third one with respect to money bill, money bill or finance bill. Okay, if the state government is passing a money bill or finance bill then also it should get the assent of the president okay these are the controls and checks which the center is imposing on the state okay okay because in these three grounds without the center you can't do anything so you are dependent on the center that is the control okay so these are the listed relations just note on the articles of 245 to 255 in legislative relations, it, we are talking about only the parliament and state legislative assembly. There are some three lists, union list. In this union list, only your center can make. It is an exclusive power. But in the state list, your state legislature can make laws. But it is not an exclusive one. Your parliament can also make laws on the state subject during some four occasions what I have taught. Okay. This concurrent list, both your parliament and state legislature can make laws. But when your parliament and state legislature is making a law on, on the same items, then your parliamentary law will prevail. Okay, your state legislature law can also prevail, but you should get the president's signature. But usually, if you see your parliament, if, if, if such occasions have happening, means your state legislative assembly is getting the president's signature, then your state law will prevail over the parliament law. But your parliament, what it will do is it will again pass a law and it will get prevailed. Okay, so that's a that is situation. And I will talk about the center's control. What is the control center is having over the state? Okay. So with that we are coming to the end of the legislative relations. Next we will see about the administrative relations.